Hi everyone. So, I am on vacation and I figured I'd show you guys a vlog slash video game hunting video here on the East Coast. So, sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy. Okay, so right here, this is a condo that I stayed in. This is a two-bedroom. I used to work at this resort for eight years until I moved to Tennessee. And as you can see, this is a two-bedroom. Here's the master suite with uh, the bath and everything else. And so this is the last day I was here, and I'm checking out, but I wanted you guys to see the... Uh, the condo here. It's where I stayed. So this is where I lived for a good 2006 to 2018, so 12 years. Uh, we're in Lee, Massachusetts as of now, and we are now heading into Lenox, Massachusetts. Uh, and so Lee is the last, well actually, Great Barrington, I think, is actually, or Stockbridge, is the last city on the pike in Massachusetts, but Lee is the second to last. But as you can see, the foliage is over, but there's still a lot of uh, leaves on the ground, and some leaves are in trees, but some leaves are on the ground here. Um, different colored leaves for the fall foliage, but as we're in the middle of November, the, uh, the leaves are all on the ground for the most part, and getting ready for winter time um, but yeah this is the back road one of the cool things that I wanted to see if I remembered because I haven't been back really driving around this area uh, I think the last time actually I was here a couple years ago but other than that it was just for a quick one night stop I didn't really drive around or go anywhere but a lot of things have changed from 2021 or 2019. I forget where I if I was here in 2019 or 2020. I want to say it was around 2020. It was because that's when I went to my buddy's um, um, celebration of life. It was in 2020. Uh, but a lot of things have changed, and one of the things that I've realized I'm so lucky that I made the choice to leave this area when I did in 2018 um, because years later the resort that I was staying at the sales center shut down and I don't know what I would have done for work this area of the Berkshires is for the last I'd say five years has really really become depressed um, I think we're in Lenox right now you might have just seen that sign on the left pass a few seconds back but we're now on the back roads from Lee into Lenox but yeah a lot of the places um, have shut down businesses have shut down one of the best pizza places I've ever had uh, I asked as soon as I checked in uh, the front desk of this resort is it still around and I was told no it shut down the pizza place was Athena's and the worst part is I missed it by a month. They had been open a month prior, but they or two months prior, but they shut down a month ago. So that's that's the worst. Um, the tanning place that I always went to, the guy retired and he shut down. That tanning place isn't there anymore, and the tanning places that they do have in this area are absolutely terrible. I mean, just god awful. And so I'm thinking to myself, my house was paid off when I made my move. So my house would have been paid, I don't have any mortgage, just property taxes, but the property taxes have shot up, I think over a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars a year since I moved in 2018, that same house that I sold to my buddy. The property taxes are fifteen hundred dollars more a year than they were when I moved. So I don't know what I would have done for work. Really the only place that I might have been able to make a decent living would have been like an Aaron's Rent-A-Center because of my sales background. But other than that, I don't know what I would have done. And the more I think about it, you know, everything happens for a reason. It's so cliche, but it's true because 
if I don't make that move in 2018, I don't go and work with Don, I don't create the roots that I have now in Tennessee, and I'm starting all over. Here in Lenox, this on the left-hand side, that building, uh, it's a restaurant called Antimony. It's, I think it's one of the brand new restaurants in the area. But that place has been so many different things over the years. I remember walking out of there drunk so many times, trying to, you know, have fun with, there's that place that I just turned to the left, it's still there, it's called Lua Holly. It's a, uh, I forget what kind of restaurant, there's Arizona Pizza, and that's still there. I was never a fan of Arizona pizza, really. Um, but yeah, now the gas station that that car is coming out of, the mobile, if I had gone to the right, that would have been the back way to my house. It would have been the, I would have cut through all the traffic you're about to see, just back roads to my house, probably 15 minutes away. Uh, there's still a shoe store to the right there. Um, this is Lennox still. Uh, Lennox eventually goes into Pittsfield, which is where we're going to be, um, and then into Lanesboro. Um, I'm going to show you a restaurant that I really wanted to eat at, one of the New England staples. There's not a lot of those restaurants around anymore. Um, this Burger King on the right-hand side, I used to go there after work every day when the Italian chicken sandwich came out. I would stop there at that Burger King every day. Now, here are some car uh, dealerships. They're still around. Uh, one of the well-known names in this area is called Haddad. You probably saw the entering Pittsfield sign. So now we're in Pittsfield. But Haddad uh, Auto Group, uh, there's a bunch of them. So on the left-hand side, if you guys watch Family Guy at all, there's a restaurant or there's a supermarket that they always show called fan, or called uh, Stop and Shop. It's a real supermarket. Now I try to get the sign to the left. I didn't do a good job of it, but we are going to come to another Stop and Shop. This restaurant here is Mazio's. It's one of the best Italian restaurants in this area. Still there, which was nice to see. Coming up on the right is the Pittsfield Country Club. I uh, was never a member of that place, but a lot of my buddies used to golf there all the time. Okay, those are signs. That purple sign there was showing people where the uh, places to go in the area are, like Tanglewood and the library and uh, the art museums and stuff like that. There's still a Ben & Jerry's there on the right that's still there in the subway right next to it. Here we're heading into downtown Pittsfield. Uh, this is where that Aaron's Renaissance Center that I mentioned earlier is on the left, as you can see. Um, now on the right, when we take this right around the rotary here, there's a um, pub called Patrick's Pub, and I used to frequent there a lot. On the left, most of those businesses are gone. As you can see, there's still an H&R block. Further down, if we had gone straight, the only movie theater in the area. There's two movie theaters left. North Adams, I think, is still available. It's still there. But Beacon Cinema, there's Patrick's Pub on the right. Beacon Cinema is the only other movie theater. There used to be a Regal, uh, but that's gone. Uh, it's been gone for a while. Uh, and there's some shops here on the left. On the right, we're going to pass the library, the Pittsfield Library. And eventually we'll get to, the, I believe, the high school. There's the library right there. High school's further down. I might have cut that out in the editing. All right, here is uh, another part of Pittsfield where a lot of the businesses are gone. There's still some car dealers. And basically, f from what I saw, there's a couple restaurants left and just a million car dealerships with just houses there on the left and businesses that are barely getting by. On the left, I think there's a Mazda, but then there's a smaller dealership called Jim Salvi's, and I used to buy cars from him all the time there, and he had a great selection, decent prices as well. Now, I believe coming up on the left, not here, but oh, I might be getting ahead of myself, and there's the Jim Salvi Signature Series that I talked about. Um, yeah, right here on the left, this is a, um, I think that's General Dynamics. 
um, it's still there. I think that whole entire complex is still general dynamics, and really that's it. If if you, you in the Berkshires now, I mean, when I went to school out there, you know, 20 years ago, there was the mall, there was everything was booming in this area, and then just gradually, it just gotten so bad. That's still General Dynamics on the left, gas station still on the right. That used to be Solomon's Furniture. They're out of business. Now it's a Napa Auto Store. Um, still General Dynamics that hold the metal fender, the fencing there, still a part of their property. Um, now we're getting into a plaza that used to have a Papa Gino's. Uh, Papa Gino is one of the best New England pizza places. Not a lot of those left anymore. Um, but that's gone. There's the BMW dealership. But uh, yeah, the Papa Gino's uh, right here in this plaza on the left. There's a Dick's Sporting Good that's still there. Raymore and Flanagan Furniture Store. But right there I pause. I don't know what that place is called anymore or what that place is called right there. Forgot it. Some sort of fun zone or something. But there was a gym, and right next to the gym, ironically, there was a Puppuccino's, which was pretty funny. All right, now here on the right, uh, you'll see Stop and Shop, and I try to get a good, um, I try to get a good look at the sign for you guys, but I didn't do a real good job, so I try to get it up there. Hopefully you guys can see it in that little plaza there, Stop and Shop, right there at the top. Uh, but yeah, the Papa Gino's is gone, and the um, gym is gone, and the plaza is pretty much done. Uh, there's not a lot of stores left. Now, coming up on the left, we're going to be in what's called the Allendale Shopping Center. And that restaurant right there is called Friendly's. That's the restaurant I'm going to show you later on in this video. Uh, one of my favorite uh, items to get food wise but we'll show you that but before we go to friendlies i wanted to show you guys the mall the mall that used to be in this area now here's another shopping plaza most of the stores that were there are still there um which was good to see but we're about to come to a mall now this mall has pretty much been out of business for years and years now it was still before i left in 2018 it was still around there were still a bunch of stores in that mall but gradually they all started leaving or going out of business the rent was too high the people that owned the mall never paid the electric bill there was a huge huge uh, kerfuffle about the whole thing and then the guy who owned the uh, mall ended up selling it so it's laid bare there's still um, a farmers market that happens uh, every Saturday and I think we'll see some people when we drive in doing the farmer's market, but there used to be a Target. That's still, the Target's still there. They own their own building, but the entire mall is just gone. There used to be so many stores in this mall. There used to be a food court. There used to be, I mean, everything you can think of. The Regal Cinema was part of the mall. Uh, they own their, actually, they own their part of the building, but they decided to just leave. I don't think COVID had anything to do with it, or maybe COVID did have something to do with it. I think they just said, screw it. You know, this, this area is becoming really depressed, so there's no no real point in, um, in continuing. But we'll get to the mall entrance here on the left, the back road to the mall entrance. And you, um, but now we're in a city called Lanesboro. It's right next to Pittsfield. And this is where the mall uh, used to be. And it's still there. It's just vacant and empty and... I mean, there was everything there. There used to be video game stores and, and FYE and uh, I'm trying to think, obviously Sears, and J.C. Penney, and Marshalls, and none of Marshalls. Um, I think a T.J. Maxx used to be in there. Uh, record record stores like FYE, like I said, and um, what else used to be in this mall? I forget. Used to be a, a, a fun zone for kids, an arcade right next to the food court and the food court as you can see there's nothing there's the target but that's about it and this used to be called the berkshire mall i think you can google it guys if you want the berkshire mall and you can read all about what happened to the mall and the tenant and the owner who owned the building and 
everything else. And for years there had been rumors, I followed up on this, that they were going to put in, oh, there was a Best Buy here. There used to be a Best Buy. I actually worked at this Best Buy um, right out of college. I sold Verizon Internet inside of Best Buy when people walked in. My job was to ask them what internet service they had at home and get them to switch to Verizon. And it was a very easy job because Verizon and Best Buy had like deals where if they switched over, they'd get like a $200 Best Buy gift card or something crazy. Um, so this used to be the JCPenney entrance right over there. As you can see, it's just empty. And right around the corner, I think, is another mall entrance plus the Best Buy. It used to be a Best Buy right there. Well, there's uh, the mall entrance, two mall entrances right there, Berkshire Mall. You can see the uh, right up top there. There's the Best Buy building. I tried to do the best I could driving with the camera, but I didn't do a great job. But you can see the blue and the yellow, so you know that this used to be a Best Buy. And it's just empty and gone. And then... Over here is another entrance. This used to be where the food court was, and another mall entrance. And then over to the right, you see all the cars. The Target's still open, but that's it. Nothing else. It's just terrible. All right, we're at Friendly's now. Those cone heads, um, I used to get those as a kid, and they used to put Reese's Pieces as a prize at the bottom of the ice cream. So as a kid, you always wanted to eat the Reese's Pieces up top, and then. Uh, the ice cream in the middle, and then there'd be Reese's Pieces at the bottom. The mini mozzarella sticks I used to love, but they changed it. Here's a tuna salad super melt that I used to get all the time. That was still, still delicious. And then, of course, the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Ice Cream Sundae. A ton of uh, peanut butter. I like that, which is the way I like it. All right, here's Mr. Deals. This is the sh uh, store in Albany Colony area, Albany, New York. I love it. And right up the top... Now, I apologize in advance for the camera work. I, I thought I did a good job. I, I don't think I did. So I apologize once again in advance. But here is the um, Nintendo DS section. Now, there's no PSP in this cabinet, just DS and 3DS. And uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, as you'll see at the bottom. But he's got some heavy hitters. This guy has a whole bunch of cool stuff. And over the years, I bought a lot of it. Um, I ended up selling my cool collection in 2020 to help the family out, and I've slowly bought my collection back over the years, but here's some boxed Game Boy Advance and Game Boy games, and some of the games I've actually sold him, like Mickey Mouse Capade, Godzilla, one of those Godzillas, the Home Alone game for the Game Boy, and Chess Master, I sold him way back in the day. It's still there, nobody's bought it. Some DS titles. And now here is the uh, Xbox and PlayStation uh, 2 wall. And he has some boxed Xboxes, as you see, in Nintendo Action sets. There's a ton of them. He's got some really, really, really cool stuff. So anyway, PS2, a whole bunch of PS2 games. Um, really all the uh, common slash uncommon games he has out, and obviously the good stuff is behind the counter. But I was still hunting for some games to try to see if I could get some of the stuff I was missing. Uh, from my collection, some of the stuff that I've added over the years that I've decided I need to, to get so my brain can, you know, calm down, if you will, and I'm not anxious knowing that I'm missing some things. But yeah, this is a lot of just common games for the PS2. Got some Spyros in there, which they're not, I would say, common. I'm surprised they're actually out. Usually the Spyro and the Crash games would be behind the counter. Got a lot of sports titles, as you see. And a lot of this is in alphabetical order, but a lot of it is not, if that makes any sense. I was talking to the owner, who I've known for a long, long time. I've made a lot of big purchases with him over the years, and he was joking about how I don't know, he doesn't understand there's like no rhyme or reason to how the games are put out. If you're in the Albany area, the Colony area, or any area of New York, really, make the drive down. If you're a video game collector, you're going to love the stuff that he has. Unfortunately, a lot of the stuff he has I don't need because I have it already, but 
So if you're a young collector starting out or if you want to add a lot more stuff, check them out. Once again, the, the store is called Mr. Deals, D-E-A-L-Z. Some junk there at the bottom. Overstock, pretty much. All right, now here's the good PS1 games behind the counter. These are the ones that are cost money. Got uh, Darkstalkers 3 there, some Lunar, some Mortal Kombat Trilogy, the Final Fantasy games. Simpsons Wrestling is an uncommon but expensive title. The Crash games, like I said, are behind the counter. Uh, Grand Theft Auto, Metal Gear, Odd World, Ape Escape, Tenchu. And then on the bottom shelf, you got the wrestling games and Ready to Rumble and Street Fighter. And over here we got the NES games, the loose NES games. Some decent heavy hitters like that Mario Brothers game right there. Okay. Now going here, I think right here I forgot some of the DS games, so I wanted to make sure that I got them in the video here for you guys, but this is where the camera work is just terrible. I thought I did a better job, but I, uh, I wasn't looking through the camera, I was looking above the camera, and I just assumed that the camera was there when it wasn't. So here are the 360 games that he has behind the glass case there. Some decent titles, a lot of Call of Duty and Halo being presented, as you can see some Fallout, Assassin's Creed. I have all the 360 games that I need. Some boxed collector's editions up there. So I didn't really need 360, but I did need a couple GameCube. And I did need a couple... Well, actually, no, I take that back. I needed Soul Calibur 2 for the 360, but I needed the Platinum Hits edition, the Platinum Hits version. Sort of like the Greatest Hits version. There's a Rob Robo Deluxe set for the Nintendo boxed. A lot of N64 systems box, the Super Nintendo, Commodore, Atari. Here's the Wii U section and the Wii section. Really good titles, Mario, Batman, Call of Duty, Scribble Knots. Some Wii games at the bottom there. Mario Parties. Sorry about the... Uh, video quality, I don't know what happened. I apologize. If you're watching this video with some Sonic titles, if you're watching this video and you saw the video quality there, I apologize. Now, so, there's the Wii games. And then right over here, we have the Wii U, uh, GameCube, obviously the Zelda titles, and the Super Smash Brothers and Star Fox. Mario games all over the place. Some other titles like Shrek, Call of Duty. Now we're going to get to the really cool stuff here to the right. So, some more GameCubes box to Sega CD, as you can see there. Some Wii at the top, or some GameCube, more GameCube at the top. But now, right here, we have some box Nintendo games. Some really cool titles, all the Mario's, Turtles, Manhattan Project, Punch-Out, Fester's Quest, some Super Nintendo box title games as well. And then some more Nintendo at the bottom there. A lot more. He used to have a lot more of these games. I bought a lot over the years. I don't have them anymore because I sold everything, like I said, in 2020, but well, Super C is a good title right there. Star Tropics, 
some more Nintendo box games, some Super Nintendo, Final Fantasy 2, Mario 64, Dr. Mario, got some more N64 games as you saw. Right over here we have a PS3, Killer Instinct Super Nintendo set, some 3DO, some Genesis. I didn't need any Genesis games, I have all the ones that I was missing. But still some cool titles. A lot of six-pack titles there. Street Fighter. Some 32X games, some loose games as well. I think you see World of Illusion with Mickey Mouse, the Sonic games. Here's his Dreamcast section. Used to be a lot more titles than he has now. Some Saturn and Sega CD as well. Some Game Genies there to the left. It's a cool Virtua Fighter. I have that, but it's cool that he has it as, as well. All right, so here's a lot of, I think, Atari boxed in television games, boxed Atari games. Some Jaguar box games as well. Some loose Odyssey cards. Some boxed Odyssey, video packs, Atari as well, loose cards, some Game Gear games up there, boxed. And then right here, a ton of PlayStation 1 games, mostly commons, mostly nothing special. Obviously, the, the good stuff was in behind the case, some long box PS1 games. I mean, he has some pops and some figurines that he carries. None of the pops I needed. I actually sold him a couple pops uh, to get a lot of the stuff out of the house that I don't need or figured I didn't really have any room for. And he gave me a pretty good deal on a lot of the stuff. And some of the stuff I wanted some good money for, but it hasn't sold. It's been on Mercari and eBay for a year now. And no one's made an attempt to buy it, so I figured, screw it, I'll take the loss. But he gave me a really good deal on all the stuff that I gave him. Some more figurines and Dragon Ball stuff. So we go around this corner here. There's a huge DVD selection, but I didn't care for that. And some more common Genesis games. These are all sports for the most part. Some loose games as well. And then here we have some Game Gear. Loose titles, a couple of Vita games boxed, a lot of PSP games that are loose, and then the bottom row there's PSP, not only movies, but PSP games boxed and complete as well. And then we go around the corner, some of those plug and play games. Now here are the loose Super Nintendo games that he has. Common and rare, all in the same bin here. He told me that he has a lot of stuff in storage as well. There's a whole bunch of uh, stuff that he has in storage. And then right to the right of the Super Nintendo games, you have all the uh, loose N64 games, but also some loose Game Boy and Game Boy Color games as well. Got some good titles here, like Castlevania The Adventure, he has a copy, I think that was Great Greed, if I'm not mistaken, that's an expensive title. I've shown you Great Greed, if you've watched my role plays before, complete the game is like eight to a hundred to a thousand bucks, so a loose copy of Great Greed is probably two hundred dollars. Some N64 loose games. Hercules is a pretty expensive title. Looks like no, that's Top Gear Rally. I thought it was Beetle Adventure Racing. It's not. All right, so over here he has some loose uh, Game Boy Advance and 3DS and DS games. And then some um, Chibi Robo there. Splatoon characters, Pokemon, boxed PSP Ratchet and Clank pa uh, bundle, and then a Super Mario 3DS bundle. Some amiibos, I think those are amiibos, I could be wrong. Some more boxed, we got some blue PlayStation controllers there. 
some accessories, boxed PS4 there, I think that's what that was. Switch, got loose Switch games, and then complete Switch games. Unfortunately, he did not have what I was looking for for Switch, so I have that exact you know, Switch Lite at the house. And that was cool. I, might, I almost bought that, but I didn't. The uh, Ultimate Edition. All right, so this is all his brand new stock right behind the counter. That is not the owner, by the way. That's just one of the employees. I don't think I ever got the owner on camera. Um, but he's, his name is Rich. He's a great guy. So if you ever stop by, tell him Andy from Tennessee said hi. He'll know exactly who you're talking about. Some box game cubes and Genesis now. I was hoping for a Sonic one. He didn't have that. He had columns and then he had a six pack box Genesis. Some Xbox controllers there. Some more uh, behind the Nintendo Powers and some just miscellaneous things behind the counter Xbox and Switch systems and brand new Xbox One games. All right, this is the stuff I got. So he gave this to me for free, the Mortal Kombat 3 Player's Guide. He just threw it in. Okay, now this is a sealed copy of Crash Bandicoot 2 Greatest Hits. Now, why did I buy it? It was sealed. I do have one, as you can see, right there, but I figured I can't go wrong with sealed. This is a greatest a player's choice version of Sonic Adventure Battle 2 for the GameCube. And then we have the uh, Greatest Hits version of Mortal Kombat Unchained. I needed that. And then we have House of the Dead 2 for the Dreamcast. So I was able to grab that. I needed that game as well. Now, if you've been following my channel, you may be wondering, why did you buy a Tetris Plus Greatest Hits? You already have one. And it's true, I do, but the one I have is not this one. It's a, the rarer of the two, which is strange. It took me a while to find this. And then we have Spyro, uh, Ripto's Rage, Spyro 2, Greatest Hits as well. So those are the games I got, guys. I think there's one more, actually, on the bottom there. Yeah. Sonic DX, Player's Choice, Sonic Adventure DX for the GameCube.